Greetings. Once again, Elder Blacklight. On this first day of 2021, I asked the question, is every black man and woman ready to be their own boss and take back the planet Earth? <clears throat> now, you know, a whole lot of people think they run businesses and they're entre entrepreneurs. But think about it. When the white man came up over here back in the day in the 1700s, 1600s, even the 1500s, he set up a trading post. The Indians, this was their land. They've been governing it and running it for years and years, and they accepted the Caucasian in. He didn't charge them no taxes. They didn't, he didn't have to have a permit or a license to trade with the Indians or trade with anybody else he wanted to. <clears throat> so eventually he took this country over through force, went to another land uh, they call Africa and got my ancestors and brought them over here and made slaves out of them for 400 years, which is unheard of for being a slave. Never was done for that long, uh, 400 years. And what else was unheard of is he took his name, language, and his uh, religion, his culture, uh, everything from him by using the Willie Lynch process. And <clears throat> eventually we became as our slave masters, using his language, wearing his names. Then, uh, he wouldn't let us in his society for a lot of years, until around the time 1950, when Martin Luther King challenged him, wanted to come in his society, so he, he let us put our foot in the, in the door, but he wouldn't let us live in the living room with him put us in the basement somewhere in the dungeon and we on the bottom floor trying to work our way up to the floor that he's on. Now do you think he's going to let us ever come on, on the top floor with him? If you do, you're some kind of a fool. So now look at this. Uh, he had his constitution, now we got ours. The coming of Master Farah Muhammad put everything in perspective and told us <clears throat> that the planet Earth is originally belonging to the original man of the planet. We're going to get into the supreme wisdom. That's our constitution. The tribe of Shabazz, the Asiatic black man. So... Of course, quite naturally, you're going to send people that look like you in to infiltrate whatever organizations you got. Now, it looks like he done did this real successfully by using payola money. And he paid his way, bought his way, threatening his way, even with death, to... Infiltrate any brother with any kind of, or sister any, with any kind of influence over the masses. Now some people are very impressionable, especially the young, the youth. Now this guy here, <clears throat> he wants to challenge the Supreme Lesson Book. But before, without him saying the word, let's look up how he presents himself. He got the uh, Masonic sign in the back, which really belongs to the black man, but the Caucasian took it over, and the knowledge of it, and a lot of black people don't know who it really belongs to. Now, he got that. It looked like uh, he, Canada. You know, that looked like a Canada sign. He got red. It could be a Canadian crypt. I mean, a Canadian blood. Then he got the tattoos on. And he's going to challenge the supreme wisdom. 
So let's get into some peace and greetings to the East family. This is Illuminati Light, and I'm your host, Majesty Montanez. So in this episode here, which is part of a lecture series that we're doing on the supreme wisdom lessons of the nation of Islam, we're going to deal with what is known as the year one of the Islamic calendar in the nation of Islam teachings known as the supreme wisdom. Now, if you want to read these lessons, all you have to do is buy the book that's meant to discredit the nation of Islam or anything to that effect. Uh, these teachings called the Supreme Wisdom Lessons helped a lot of us growing up, including myself. You know, as a young man, I encountered these teachings and they were very helpful to me. The Lost Man Muslim Lesson, <clears throat> excuse me, in the Lost Man Muslim Lesson, number one, question four, the year one of the Islamic calendar according to the nation of Islam is mentioned and I'm, I'm going to tell you what that year is and I'm going to demonstrate that there's a contradiction overall right and he's now we're going to continue this but before we do continue his uh, statements but before we do, we like you to consider this. Uh, every, all his, he don't mention, and you will see for yourself, where he gets his information from. When he calls uh, Yaqub, or AKA Jacob, a mythical character. Now a whole lot of brothers is going around saying that, uh, the Bible is myth, and the characters are myth, but they're not telling you where they got their information from. Now, as you see, that brother, he's a light-skinned brother, and this is Master Farah Muhammad. Allah came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, and he's holding up the book, the Quran. That's a law book. Now he's using the Quran, the Torah, and the Bible, especially the Bible because people was taught the language, the slaves were taught the language of the Bible through their slave master. Now, when we come back, we about to ready to, to con conclude this short segment and come back with another one but we want you to think on this while you know that why would someone challenge the teachings of the nation of Islam but never challenge the teachings of their oppressor or their conqueror they all want to challenge the teachings of the nation of Islam, but they don't never want to challenge the so-called slave master and the, his children. This is black light. Think on that. 